The American Midwest. Often overlooked, this region has extensive farmland, charming cities, and the friendliest people, who refuse to say the word soda. Over the past few years, I've had the privilege of living in the Midwest. Now, recently, I've been traveling to a bunch of places within the region that I'd either only heard of but never been, or that I'd never even heard of at all. Wherever I found myself, I did the thing I always do, explore. Join me. This is Tom in the Midwest. Cape Air today. Cape Air was an airline that started in Massachusetts flying between Cape Cod and different destinations. They've expanded to do a lot of government contracted regional flights here and today we are flying to Quincy, Illinois, a small town right on the Mississippi River. Cape Air only uses really small planes so today we're going to be flying on a propeller plane. A first time for both me and for Lindsay so we're super excited. Let's go to the gate. Wow, so many people here. No wonder plane tickets are crazy expensive right now. Not these tickets though. We're flying to Quincy for $59 a person, everything included. It's pricier than the train, but we're gonna take the train back later today, so thought we'd do both experiences. Well, the TSA agent started arguing with me about whether the age on my ID was my actual age, so that was a great start to my morning. So we're at gate L11A, that's the Cape Air gate here at O'Hare, and about half hour before our flight leaves, we have to check in. So I tried to check in online, but they need to like take the measurements of your bags. I'm pretty sure they weigh passengers because the planes are really, really small. So we got here nice and on time. So in about 20 minutes, I'm gonna head over there and we're gonna check in. So Cape Air is actually officially called the Hyannis Air Service, named after the village on Cape Cod. And it uses only very small aircraft. So the vast majority are Cessna 402s. Um, they even have one amphibious airplane actually. Uh, but the Cessnas are currently being replaced by Technum's P2012s. We'll see which one we get today. So they didn't weigh us, they just asked us for our weight and then they weighed our bags, but we only have two personal items. And then we got printed boarding passes. I have to say the Cape Air staff is some of the friendliest staff I've ever met. I've been to O'Hare many times, sometimes for long haul international flights and sometimes for domestic flights. But either way, the aircrafts that I normally board here at O'Hare are so much larger than what we're about to get on. And it feels very strange to be at this major airport and get on a small propeller plane. But it's time to head to the gate. So once all three passengers of our flight were checked in, our weights written down, the Cape Air staff member led us down the stairs at the gate and through at least four of these walkways until we finally reached the spot on the tarmac where our Technum P2012 Traveler was waiting for us. This is the moment it began to feel surreal to me. We were really about to board this tiny little thing. Oh, they have chargers? Yeah, these, according to my brother, these are brand new. All right. To add to the luxury, Cape Air provides an onboard magazine, and a pretty nice one at that. If I could have everybody's attention, we'll go to the safety items of the Technum Traveler. 
two-person specials in every house, four emergency exits, two in the back, two in the front. This is a two-fire extinguisher. One's down the captain's chair, one's to the left side of the door you guys came through. You use the fire extinguisher, pull on the pins, squeeze, and shoot at the base of the fire. Your seatbelts must be worn throughout the whole flight. They were just like car seatbelts. Your cell phones must be off. Uh, it is a non-smoking flight that includes e-cigarettes. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me or reference the safety paper card. It's in front of you in the seat back pocket. Other than that, our flight down to Quincy is about an hour and 30. Give or take, sit back, relax, enjoy your flight. Thank you for flying with us. Thank you. See you guys in Quincy. Now seems like a good time to talk about what Cape Air actually is. So Cape Air, which is still officially called the Hyannis Air Service, was founded in 1988 and initially flew between different cities in New England. In the 90s it expanded to the Caribbean and as you can see on this map, they also fly routes in the Midwest as well as in Montana. These flights are part of the government's essential air service program. Basically, in 1978, the US government deregulated the airline industry and airlines could choose where they wanted to fly. Of course, airlines dropped the unprofitable routes, but the government determined that these communities still needed to be served by air service. So now, basically, the government guarantees funding for these flights and gives different companies contracts to fly these routes. So Cape Air has a bunch of them, Chicago to Quincy being one of them, and that's why our airfare was so cheap. Now, unfortunately, you were supposed to have your phone off during the flight, so I wasn't able to capture any footage from the sky, but this Google Earth simulation should give you a little bit of a clue of what the flight was like. It's a real bummer because the views were spectacular. It had taken about an hour and 40 minutes to get from Chicago to Quincy. And just like at O'Hare, a Cape Air staff member was there to guide us to the airport terminal. Although this little walk got me significantly less steps on my step tracker. This is Quincy Regional Airport's terminal building. Now previously the smallest airport I'd ever been to had been one in Southern France. That one had two gates and was actually served by a jet. So I think this wins the record for smallest airport I've ever been to. Seriously, the majority of the building is taken up by the TSA. <laughs> it's so tiny here. We were the only plane on the tarmac. There's the cafe. <laughs> and over there is the bar. balcony because the airport lady said we'd get a better shot of the plane up here. Mm. Let's walk through this grand main door and head outside. So Lindsay, let's start with you. How was your Cape Air experience? I thought it was really fun. I liked that you could see all both sides of the plane, but I also really liked the comfortability of the seats as well as the chargers and everything. It was really nice that we knew we could have fully charged phones by the time we got here. So we're waiting for an Uber driver. 
looks like we're going with Lyft instead because that's a better option here and it's a little bit cheaper. Uber was still telling me that they were looking for a driver and Lyft had four available within 15 minutes. Yeah, what an experience this was. It, for both of us, it was our first time on a propeller plane and then a Technam P 2012 is not a bad plane to be on for your first time. A lot better than economy class on a jet. And we were two out of three passengers. So mm -hmm. if he paid what we paid, then their turnover for this flight was $180. Like Lindsay said, the panoramic views both out the front and out the sides were cool. I've never been able to see a plane take off or land from the front before. And uh, it was loud, yeah, but that's what you would expect. It actually wasn't even as loud as I expected. Also, we flew at a pretty low height, so there was a view the whole time. Uh, I saw long freight trains, metro stations. I saw a lot of windmills and a lot of farmland, a lot of baseball diamonds too. So overall, I thought it was very great value. Um, I really appreciated how friendly both the airport and the onboard staff were. I uh, highly recommend flying with Cape Air. This was such a thrilling experience. Uh, and now we get to enjoy the small city of Quincy, Illinois. We might still be in Illinois, but people speak very differently down here. What part of Chicago are you from? The 30th, all lying on the trees alongside the bank. Cool. I bet that's cool. It brings, uh, it brings people to town. So we just made it to downtown Quincy. How long was that? About a... 15 minute Uber ride? Yeah. A uh, Lyft, sorry. And we had such a great Lyft driver. This guy was such a local. He's been here for 20 years. We drove down an old abandoned Kmart and he's like, all the women in town really excited because they're turning this old Kmart here into a Target. <laughs> it was amazing. Um, I see the Mississippi River, but I'm gonna end this video here. If you wanna take a look at what Quincy, Illinois looks like, stick around for the next video. We're gonna be taking Amtrak's Carl Sandburg here from Quincy, Illinois, back to Chicago. Oh, hey, look, here's the park where Lincoln had a debate. If you haven't already, please subscribe to Trains Are Awesome, and we'll see you next time.